Greetings campers, it's Wednesday, June 2nd, here in Montreal, and uh, I'm your host, The Cheap Bastard, and I'm going to show you uh, what uh, kind of uh, camp kitchen you can put together for one dollar. Uh, everything that you see in front of you is assembled uh, out of recycle bins and trash cans and gutters and curbs uh, found outdoors here in Montreal. I'm going to give you a brief tour, and then uh, we'll start breaking things down. First, I have a 1.5 liter water jug with a compression seal. I have uh, two uh, uh, containers that I use for alcohol fuel. This is my uh, cooking pot with a clothes uh, hanger uh, bale. This is the uh, windscreen that I use. Here's my stove right here. Uh, pot lid right there. Uh, the stove comes with a uh, reduction ring or simmering ring and a snuffer or cap. I have a, a lid that goes on top of my pot for drinking coffee. I have a cozy uh, with some uh, polyester mosquito netting that I use for filtering uh, water and uh, scrubbing the inside of my pot. I have a spoon and last but not least I have a lighter which cost me one dollar. There's the one dollar camp kitchen. More to come. So first up for discussion is the alcohol stove that I've created. It consists of the uh, main body uh, was a uh, tin of uh, pork pate. Uh, I can't even imagine what that must have tasted like, uh, but somebody ate it and I collected the tin. Inside there's a piece of fiberglass that's stuffed in there and held in place with a stainless steel mesh that I pulled out of a, a strainer that was on the street. This is capped off with a uh, wire cloth pot stand which uh, under testing here at home was able to hold a weight of 30 pounds before uh, it started to deflect so that's plenty strong enough. The simmering ring is made from the bottom of another can just like this as well as the lid and uh, the whole thing comes apart. You can uh, put the flame out like that or you can simmer whatever it is you want to make like that uh, and uh, pretty simple operation. The windscreen is a piece of uh, aluminum flashing that has been drilled with some holes uh, using actually not a drill but a paper punch uh, and that goes like that and then my pot simply sits right on the stove like so. The windscreen is designed to maintain maximum BTUs so there's a gap of about uh, oh a quarter of an inch all the way around uh, the, the, between the, the wall of the stove and the wall of the windscreen. Uh, the uh, lid for the pot uh, is just uh, the lid for the coffee can and I use a clothes peg to hang on to that. Uh, the interesting thing is when you're cooking with this arrangement you can, when you're finished, invert the windscreen, set the pot down in it and put your lid back on and this thing will continue to cook for about 20 minutes if you're doing freeze-dried meals. Uh, it's a really nice feature. Uh, there's no convection current anymore because the holes are at the top instead of the bottom so all the heat is reflected back into the pot. A very nice feature. So next let's talk about the pot because it is kind of an interesting little pot. It's a coffee can that formerly held uh, uh, 8.8 uh, ounces of uh, Illy Espresso. It's a very expensive coffee. I would never buy it. It's far too expensive for me but I like the can and I find them on the curb all the time every Wednesday. Because the can is lined on the inside, it's basically essentially a non-stick pan, pot rather. So when you're finished cooking, you simply fill some water up to about there, put the lid on, shake it, pour it out, and you're done. Uh, should uh, more scrubbing be required, uh, I use this uh, polyester mosquito bug net to finish off anything that might be left behind. As well, I like to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, but uh, I don't want to carry an extra cup, so the pot doubles as my drinking cup. And uh, what I will simply do then is use this uh, plastic lid. Hey! Snaps right on. And there you go. Also, the lid closes. You can put a straw in there. And uh, because this can does get rather hot uh, for drinking, it's a little too hot. I can slide it into my uh, cozy, like so, or I can use the lid as an insulator and just hang on to the bottom of the can, like so. 
The next thing I want to talk about is my uh, water vessel, this plastic jug. Uh, it was uh, originally a container for Greek olives. It has an uh, interesting uh, two-part lid with a compression ring. Uh, I substituted uh, the old uh, compression wing, ring with a uh, rubber band off a bunch of broccoli from the grocery store. Creates an airtight, watertight seal. Uh, and I use this to collect water along with, again, my bug net, which I can triple or double fold over the top and just screw on the, uh, the external ring and fill that with water and the net will fill out, filter out all the nasty chunks. Uh, this uh, container also acts as a storage vessel for everything that you see sitting in front of you and uh, we'll show you how that works here in just a moment. Okay, so now we're going to break everything down and pack it all up because it's time to go. The lid comes off. That comes off. The first thing I want to do is roll up my windscreen. It snugs up just like that. It slides down into my pot. My stove is next. I'll uh, put the lid on and uh, attach the simmering ring to the bottom and the wire pot stand just fits right around the sides like that and it slides down into my pot then uh, my fuel I use uh, usually two bottles is enough to get me to through uh, three or four days if I use it uh, wisely and judiciously my lighter goes in there the clothespin goes in there the lid goes on top and that just pops right into the uh, water jug Next, I insert my spoon, stolen from the cabinet here at home. Uh, the uh, wire bale slides right in there as well. My uh, pot scrubber screen goes in. The plastic lid follows. Part one of the lid. Part two, compress, screw down. This I just throw into my backpack anywhere it'll fit. As you can see, it's collapsible. And there you have it. One dollar. Camp Kitchen. Enjoy.